Hey, you have Alt Beer here, and I am here to walk you through um, how to solder up the first badge I ever did, which is this um, DFW um, hacker badge, the uh, green beer bottle badge. Um, I know several people still have kits that they bought uh, a few years ago that they haven't put together, and so I thought I would use this opportunity to um, put together a video. Um, explaining how you solder together the badge and walking through the whole process. So um, let's get started. What we have is um, all of the bill of materials here. So if you got the kit, you probably got most of this. If you just got the PCB, you probably bought uh, a lot of this. Um, but basically, um, the badge is made up of uh, just a very few components. We have 15 LE or resistors, which are 470 ohm resistors. We have um, five LEDs, which are red, green, blue LEDs uh, of the common cathode type. So the RGB LEDs come in two flavors, common cathode and common anode. Um, and if you use the wrong type, it won't work. And in some extreme cases, it might destroy the LED. Um, so in this case, we're using common cathode. And what that means is um, basically each one of these LEDs has three LEDs inside of it, a red, a green, and a blue, and they share a cathode or the negative uh, pin in a circuit. A common anode LED would be the opposite. It would share the positive pin, but in this case, we're using common cathode. We have our Arduino Nano version 3, um, which is based off of an AT Mega 328P chipset. Um, this particular Nano um, is one of the uh, cheaper um, Chinese models, so it's not an FTDI USB um, interface. It is a CH340 USB interface, and what that means is if you're using an older system um, to try to interface with this board, you may have to get the CH340 USB drivers. Uh, most modern day systems, Windows 7, Windows 10, versions of Linux that are recent, um, you won't have to worry about that. It's just something I'm calling out. Um, then uh, we also have our battery holder and the CR2032 batteries. So this um, badge was designed to work off of two CR2032 batteries. Um, and, and the batteries are three volts each, so when stacked together, um, they provide six volts to the Arduino, which is enough to power it. Um, we also have an optional um, uh, component, which is the uh, female header pins. Um, this will allow you to remove the Arduino from the badge and use it on other projects. So we'll go ahead and, and get that going as well. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is clear my workspace here, and then we'll start by adding the resistors onto the badge. Um, I always like to start with the resistors because they seem to be able to be soldered the fastest. Um, even though there's quite a few of them, um, it will go fairly quickly. So um, when working with uh, resistors, um, we have to take them off of this paper sheeting that they come on. So we'll do that real quick. And then we will enter them onto the badge. So the badge has a bunch of holes on it. And that is why these type of components are called through hole components, because we are going to put them through the holes and then solder them on the back side. So we will start here. And with um, these uh, uh, resistors on the badge, um, there's a lot of different holes on here. Not all of them are used. So you can look on the back of the badge and I have an indicator of where the resistors go. So you'll have 11 on this side and 4 on this side, and we're just going to line them up to where they go into those holes. Now resistors, unlike other types of um, electronics, um, do not have directionality. They're, they're not um, polarized in any way, so um, you can put them in either direction and they'll work just fine. Um, I tend to put them all in the same directions that the colors all line up. Um, that's mainly just an OCD uh, thing. Uh, you don't have to do that. It would work fine if you mixed them up. Um, so don't worry about that. So what I'm doing as I place these in here is I'm using my fingers on the backside just to spread the legs out. 
Um, this way they don't fall out of the board when I flip it over because we are going to flip the board over to solder it. And while I'm placing my components, I did power on my soldering iron. Um, that way it has some time to warm up so it's ready to go when we're ready to start soldering. Um, different uh, electronics and during components um, have different tolerances to heat. So for some um, very finicky pieces of equipment, you might have to be careful about how hot you run your soldering iron if you have an adjustable iron or what wattage you use if you don't have an adjustable iron. Um, for this particular badge and these components, they're all pretty hardy. So you can um, hit this with quite a bit of heat and not worry about burning any of the components. I have a, a soldering iron that you can dial the temperature in on, and I currently have it set for 225 degrees Celsius, um, which is a little hot for some components, but it'll work just fine on this board and should allow the solder to melt very quickly, allowing this to be a fast process. And with these, it'll probably take me longer to put these on the board than to actually solder them. Just because of the process of lining up the holes and getting them in just right. many left. On my first iteration of this board, the first prototype that I did, um, I managed to put the holes a little too close together to where it was very difficult to get the resistors to plug in. So that is one of the reasons why you prototype stuff before you do a big run of it. So luckily I only did a small number of boards that way and then was able to correct that mistake before I did the big production run. This is the last one, get that in, and there we go. So it looks nice and ready to solder. So for solder, um, I use a 60-40 uh, solder mix. Um, this is a, a 0 0.8 millimeter solder that's a rosin core. That means that it, um, the center of the um, solder um, actually has rosin which acts as a flux so you don't have to deal with adding flux to um, maintain a, a certain heat level. So we'll get my iron ready and we will solder away. So I'm going to hit the pin and the pad at the same time. I got a little too much solder on that one. And you want your solder, when it's done, to look like a little volcano, not a big ball. Because the big ball is not going to be a good conductor. It's going to cause you problems with electricity passing through it. Let me get a different angle on this. better. So we're just going to hit each one of these and get solder around that circular pad and on the pin that is part of the leg of the resistor and then 
you want to make sure it goes down into the hole as well. So this way it's a nice solid solder joint. You do want to be careful not to get your fingers too close. I mean, it's obvious you don't want to touch the iron because it's very hot, but even just getting too close can cause you to get a burn because of the heat radiating off of the tip of the iron. So we're just walking this along, hitting every one of these. And we got four more over here. There we go. So you can see we have nice solder joints little volcanoes that are nice and shiny. You don't, you don't want to see dullness on the solder joint because that's also an indication of a bad solder. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these diagonal cutters. They're called that way because of the diagonal angle of the blades um, when they're together. Um, these work best for cutting pins um, and legs off of components. And you want to make sure you hold on to the components as you're cutting so that they don't fly everywhere and get in your face or worse fall on the floor and get in your carpet and you find them six months later when you're walking barefoot and it stabs into your foot experience has told me that's not a good thing And there we have it. So you can see I didn't cut too closely because I didn't want to damage the solder joints, but I wanted to cut close enough that I don't have anything poking out that's going to stab me. All right. And so then the next component that we're going to work on is the female headers. The female header pins are going to allow us to remove that Arduino when we want to use it to play on another project and then put it back when we're done. Now you notice these are wiggly and we want to make sure that they're perfectly straight when we solder them. That way um, the Arduino can plug straight in on there. And so what I found works well for that is if you take some male header pins and just stick them into the female header pins There we go. And what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins across is about the width of a nano. And so you'll notice they're nice and straight and it holds together. And then when I flip it over, all the pins are nice and straight and ready to solder and it, I don't have to worry about it angling. All right, so let us solder these. Unlike the resistors, we shouldn't have to trim these legs off because they're close enough to the board. They're not going to impede us or stab us. And the battery connector is going to go on top of these, so it shouldn't be an issue having these little bumps stick out in the back. Now these pins are a little thicker than the legs of the LEDs, which is why it's taking a little longer per pin to heat it up to where it'll take the solder. 
I'm noticing it's going a little slower than when I ran across the LEDs, or I mean, not the LEDs, the uh, resistors, because the resistor legs were very thin, so they heated up quicker. It's not a significant increase. It's minor, but it's noticeable. All right, so let's get this side. Even though these pins are thicker, which makes it harder to get the tip of the iron on the pad, you want to make sure you're touching both the pad and the pin. Because if you only heat up the pin, you're not going to get a good solder joint. Because the solder is just going to melt against the pin and it won't adhere to the pad which is on the PCB. left. All right. And that is done. So we can see we have some nice solder joints there. Just do a quick inspection. Those all look pretty good. And then we'll take out these mail headers that were just there as spacers. And you'll see these turned out nice and straight and level. That way our Adreno can plug into it. All right. So the next Thing that we need to deal with is the LEDs. So these common cathode LEDs, as I said, have three positive lines um, for red, green, and blue, and then one common negative line. So you should notice that the one leg is longer than all the rest, and that longer leg is the common cathode, the negative line. Now on the badge, to figure out where to put it in, we can look at the back and see where all these circuits are. So we can see that there's one circuit that seems to connect all of those middle pins there, that third from the top pin, and that is going to ground. So that is from ground, that's the common cathode. So that is where we want to put this longer pin, and what that means is it's three from the top. So on every one of these LEDs, we want to put the longer pin three from the top or one from the bottom. So we're going to stick it in there. And then we will get the rest of the pins to line up in the holes. And the legs of the LEDs are quite thick, so it's going to be a challenge to get them all to line up at the same time. But once you do, it'll slide in. Now you'll notice it doesn't slide in all the way. There are stops built in on the LED legs that um, actually prevent you from going past. Um, that way it doesn't spread the legs so far out it damages the LED. So that's about as far as it's going to go in. That's about normal. And that's where we're going to put the rest of these. So we have the five LEDs are all going to go in the same way where that common cathode is the third from the top or the second from the bottom pin that we're putting it in that hole, that longest pin. Okay, so we have three done, two left. The thing I love about this badge is because um, the, the electronics and the, the circuit itself is um, fairly simple, um, it, it is a great um, introduction into um, soldering or into hardware development like programming and, um, LEDs using the Arduino. 
um, because there's not a lot of complexity here. There's not a whole, whole lot of ways to screw up. Um, so now that we have those in there, you'll see that the legs are standing out the back. We are going to solder those together. Just like with the other pins, these are thicker, so you're going to have to keep the iron on the pin a little longer to make sure that it heats up before you apply the solder. And you want to make sure that you, you press firmly to where the tip of the iron is going to actually hit the pad as well as the pin. Now with these, because they are close together, you also want to make sure you don't get so much solder on there that you bridge the connections and connect two of them together. If you do, that's something that's easy to fix, but you want to make sure that you notice it to fix it before you apply power, because that could cause problems. If I wanted to make things easier on myself, I probably would have only put in three of these LEDs and soldered them and then put in the other two. Because as it is with all five, you end up fighting against the pins of the other LEDs as you're trying to place the iron. The other LED pins get in the way, but I've done enough of these that I've learned how to work around that. But if that's a problem for you, don't feel uh, like you have to put in all five LEDs before you solder them. You can do one at a time. You can put in like a row of three. That way they don't get in each other's way as you're trying to solder them. Whatever works for you. Almost done, just a couple more on this LED. All right, now let's take a look. So, those turned out pretty good. Nice little volcanoes, no big balls of solder anywhere. So once again, we're going to use our diagonal cutters and trim those legs off. You don't want to get too close to the solder joints. That way you don't damage the solder joint. But you don't want to leave too much of it, the pin there where it's going to stab you. Especially since this is a wearable, it could snag on clothing or other things if we don't trim it. All right. So that is nice and trimmed. And as far as components left, we have the battery. The Arduino is just going to plug in, so the battery is the next thing to solder. We're going to put it like this, so that means we don't need all this wire. So I'm going to trim the wire to about the length that I think I need. And then we're going to strip the wire. They make special tools for this, but I find the diagonal cutters work just fine. What I do is just kind of lightly apply pressure and twist so it goes all around. I don't want to cut through it, but once I get a, a toe hold on that piece of plastic, we can pull the plastic off. And then we have nice loose wires, which we're going to want to twist up so that we can insert them into the through holes without snagging one or two wires and having those little bits of wire be exposed and not going through the hole. All right, so now on the back of the badge, 
there the two holes are labeled ground and voltage in so our ground is going to be our black cable and the voltage in will be the red cable and then I'll hold that with my thumb as I place it down and then we'll use our diagonal cutters again as a weight to make sure that those wires don't move as I go to solder them and we will solder these once again hitting the wire and the pad at the same time you want to make sure you get it down in that hole as well the solder all right then we'll look at the other side and you can see the solder came all the way through and we have this leftover bit of wire that I'm going to snip off over here so it's nice and clean and it's connected there now to attach the battery to the back I am going to use velcro you can use hot glue a lot of people have had good um, success with hot glue um, I've just found that um, velcro seems to, to work best so I buy it in these sheets of dots now um, that way I don't have to deal with cutting up Velcro strips. So we have the Velcro dots. I'm going to take a couple for the badge side. I'll use the furry part of the Velcro dot and just place them anywhere in the middle there. And then we'll take the rough Velcro dots. And we will place them on the back here of this battery holder, like so. And now, when I apply it, we have the battery holder is connected. This particular battery holder has an on off switch. And the batteries go in there, and we'll play with that in a moment. Before we get to the batteries, though, we want to work on our Arduino. The Arduino Nano is the next component and the brains of this badge. So I bought the, the type that are already pre-soldered. Um, you can buy them cheaper if you have to solder the legs on yourself and it'll work just like the other soldering. You just have to put those legs on. So in this case, we have this Arduino Nano and we want to um, get it loaded to have the software for the badge on it. Now, in order to do that, I have to plug it in USB to my computer and I'm going to use the um, Arduino IDE software. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is the Arduino IDE. Um, this is version 1.8.13 for Windows. Um, there are uh, versions of this for just about all the operating systems out there, Mac and Linux and uh, everything else. So you should be able to find a version of this um, program that works for you and it's free. Um, it's not something you have to purchase. And you can see I already have the code loaded for this badge. So this badge code will light, uh, this is called the color walk code. It will light up the um, LEDs one at a time and change what color it's lighting up as it goes around the loop of the star. Um, simplistic code, but it tests things out and you can always write your own code to control these LEDs later. Now, um, if you don't have the code, you might be thinking, where do I get this code? Well, it is available if you go to dfwhackerbadge.com. Um, you can click the GitHub link there, and that um, GitHub link will uh, bring you to the code section. In fact, this website is being hosted under docs on this GitHub, so it is one and the same site. Um, this one goes through, uh, gives you instructions about the badge, and the, the assembly, um, the bomb, all of that that I'm walking you through here. And this has the code. And you can see there's a couple of different programs out there. I'm using this um, color walk code for uh, low power consumption. Um, so 
Uh, basically, it, it doesn't light all the LEDs at once. It only lights one at a time. Um, that's what allows it to be a low power consumption. There is um, other versions um, of the color walk code that um, light up more than one LED at a time. Um, and basically, you, you can write your own code. It's in the Arduino uh, language. But this is where you would get it, dfwhackerbadge.com. All right, so now that we're there, we need to load our code onto our badge. And this is where my word of warning earlier about um, USB drivers uh, um, might be appropriate because if it doesn't recognize your device, then that could be an issue for you. Now, one thing I always do, and I'm going to uh, show you this tool, whenever I'm plugging electronics into my machine, um, I use um, a USB digital tester to do it. Um, I don't need to test it. I don't need to see the output uh, that shows like what voltage or amps this thing is drawing. Um, this acts as a filter. Um, that way, if there's something wrong with my electronics, like um, I have a short or an open or um, something is going to cause a big current draw or a power spike, this protects my PC from the electronics because this has basically a little battery in there and it's acting like a, US, uh, a USB power unit would for a, a, a PC, only on a very small scale because it's filtering the power as it goes through it. And um, these devices are very cheap. I think I got this one for $5 on, on Amazon. Um, and it's totally worth it because I have fried USB ports on uh, laptops and other computers before by not plugging in with this when I should have. So now I just always use a device like this when I go to plug in any electronic. So it's just a good word of warning there. Now one thing before I plug this in, I'm going to um, tell you about the Arduino software. When you um, uh, go to plug in a device, you have to tell this IDE software what type of device you're going to be plugging in to help it figure that out. Um, because it's not the smartest piece of software. It won't always auto-detect properly. And for some reason, it's not showing the drop-down menus. But under Tools, um, you can choose the board and the processor. And we can see down here what I've chosen. So the board that I chose was the Arduino Nano. And the processor was ATmega 328P. And you'll see old bootloader in parentheses there. That's because these cheap Chinese chips um, use the old bootloader. If you were to buy one of the newer ones on, on Amazon um, that is using an FTDI USB instead of the CH340, then you probably can choose just the regular 328p chip and not the old bootloader. Um, worst case is it's not going to um, be able to recognize your chip and you just choose the other one and it will. So it, it's always trial and error is an option there. So let's uh, plug this in. Now the, um, the USB Nano, the USB on the Nano is a USB mini port. So that is this squarish looking uh, port. And uh, go that direction. I will plug that in. And then the software will recognize it. And then I always verify my code in case maybe while I was scrolling through it, I hit something that uh, a key that I didn't mean to hit. So we'll do a verify and make sure that the code is good before we push it to the board. So it compiles it and says, okay, it's done, no errors. So now I'm going to click this upload button and upload the code to the board. And you can see it says uploading. Now, if you had had the wrong bootloader chosen, um, it would have given you a red error message here saying cannot uh, interface with board or something to that effect. But this has done uploading. That means it's successful. So we can unplug this from the USB. And now we are ready to try it on our board because we don't need batteries in it. Um, we can actually power it via the, the Arduino um, USB power. So the first thing is we're going to mount this into those female headers and we can see that's mounted on there. And then we will plug it in just like we did a second ago and we should see it run our code. And there we go. So you can see the LEDs are lighting up. Let me see if I can turn the light off so you can see it better. There we go. 
So yeah, worked out pretty well and it didn't take very much time at all. And then the only other thing left to do is to test that it works with batteries. And so what we'll do is pop in our batteries. And now you'll notice there's a little plus and a minus. And what this means is that part of the battery needs to go down on that. So where it says plus, we're going to put this negative side up because the plus is going down. The negative, we'll put that negative side down, positive side up. And then we will turn that switch on and it works. So that is how you build a DFW hacker badge. This has been Altbeer. Thank you for watching this. Um, you can check out uh, more of my training information at altbeer.us. That's A-L-T-B-I-E-R.us. Thank you very much.